Did the Pokemon TCG just trick us? Did they absolutely use our hype and FOMO against us with the Charizard UPC? Did they know that they were going to be buying this thing to oblivion and that there was going to be a ton of product available for everybody at the regular MSRP price? Yes, I think they did. I think they absolutely used the tactics that they can use in the market in order to get people to purchase a ton of product. And they did. They did it extremely well. So today, this is going to be a little bit of a hot take. And this is going to be a little bit of knowledge for mistakes and how you could maybe prevent that in the future. So guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe, hit that notify, and as always, hit that like button. We get 100 likes in this video. Also, just a reminder, we are getting closer to 2,500 subscribers, which is our next milestone here on the channel. Uh, when we get there, we're going to be doing a giveaway for a Charizard UPC, even though the discussion's about that. I feel that that's a good item to give to you guys as a thank you for being a subscriber to this channel. Um, also, memberships down below are going to be open. Um, if you're interested in joining the membership, any money or proceeds that come from that here in the month or the months leading up to the 2,500 subscribers will be put into the pot for that. We're trying to keep it right now. My budget with monetization is about 300 to 350 right in that range. Any memberships that come up between now and then and any money from the video monetization will, of course, bolster that account a little bit more to increase the amount of items or how big the items are when we come down to the giveaway. So once again, guys, if you are interested in joining the memberships, that will also give you exclusive first access to Discord. I'm building a server right now. I'm trying to get everything in line. I'm trying to make some sales floors and some things for a little bit of reduced pricing on selling things, of course. I want to get some vetted sellers in there. If you sell so many times through there, you'll become a vetted seller in which you may, people may be more comfortable to purchase from you without paying the goods and services and those kind of fees. And that's what I want to do is kind of reduce these transactions for people in our Discord. So guys, if you're interested in getting first access, if you're interested in maybe some exclusive content that I'm trying to work on, then definitely hit the subscribe button and the, actually hit the membership button down below to join the channel and get on that. So... Without that, with all that being said, let's move on to the important things of this video. Did Pokemon itself trick us with the Pokemon Charizard UPC? I think that they did. I think that they knew that they were going to print a ton of this product. And I, by a ton, I mean, I just went up to my Walmart here on Friday, and which was yesterday at the time of this recording. It was yesterday. I went up there, and they had 10, 10 of these Charizard UPCs on the shelf. Um, I talked to my friend over here. I didn't go south, but he was there and he said that there were eight still on the shelf down there. So there's 18 of them right now on the shelf that I can buy at MSRP. That means if I'm seeing that many here in rural Wisconsin in the middle of nowhere, there is a ton of these products out there, which means the price is going to continue to sit there. And yes, the price is below MSRP. I will put this right next to me here, which is going to show you that they are selling for buy one, get one off now does that mean somebody's going to sit there and say well that's a sale price of course that's going to be typically these items are not included in those every time i've seen a buy one get one half off it's usually packs and they will put a limitation or like these a premium collection something like that is usually not included in those sales and this time it is so that tells you how many potential product how much potential product there is that even the stores and pokemon is allowing us item like this to be buy one get one half off so once again i think that there's a ton of this out there and pokemon did it perfectly when it came down to marketing and selling this product they put the charizard they put a upc everybody just came hot and heavy off of this off the celebrations upc that market had finally just cooled where people weren't going nuts for it and they pulled a fast one and threw out another one a year later and everybody bid on it and everybody fought for it. Everybody wanted this product because of the fact of how difficult the Celebrations UPC was. They used our hype and FOMO for that chart or the, for the Celebrations UPC against us for the Charizard UPC. They had it figured out and they did it perfectly. They had tons of sales. Allocations were through the roofs. Pre-orders everywhere. I mean, GameStop, how many pre-orders? Target, pre-orders. Walmart. Pre-orders. There were pre-orders everywhere for this product. And even our distributors did not realize how much product was coming. Um, I know even my distributor said he figured it was going to be three to one. And now talking to him, he's, he says probably 10 to one. He said there's a ton 
a ton of this stuff out there. He's, but yeah, it, it's just not so much this product is out there. And yet, the other point that he pointed out to me is there's another wave coming. He knows that they're getting more product of this in December. So it's like Pokemon went all in on this product, knowing that Hype and FOMO from the Celebrations UPC was going to drive the price through the roof. And everybody bit. And yet, we look at something that was released really similar to it and really close to date, which is an exclusive to GameStop only. The Arceus V-Star Ultra Premium Collection. I know when I put that put the tag or put the that on the community page for the pre-order for that, that everybody, a couple people, the comments are still on there. We're like, yeah, I'm not interested in that. I'm gonna save it for the Charizard UPC. I'm gonna try and get a pre-order for that. And it's understandable. I mean, a lot of people did. I think they focused on the Charizard UPC and this RCS V Star UPC kind of got forgotten. And honestly, it's a nice product. It's still a very nice product. I bought two of them because I thought it'd be a nice little box to put away. Just like the Charizard UPC, just like the Celebrations UPC. I try to get two of everything to put away just because price-wise, it's a good number. And you can actually get some really good potentials in the long run, of course. Um, I do have three of the Charizard UPCs. We're going to open three of them for Christmas. They're already wrapped. They're put in, getting ready for Christmas. And I will have three of those left, and one of them is going to you guys. That's why I will still have two left here on the shelf unopened. Once again, I think that it's some great opportunities. I think that it's a great product long term. Um, the people that were putting money into this were a short term investment, thinking that they could pick it up at MSRP, get that quick flip. You know, like we saw with the Celebrations UPC, that product accelerated extremely fast, went right to the roof immediately, up to $300 within a month and a half. It accelerated fastly, and I think a lot of people took that hype and FOMO and put it towards the self, this Charizard UPC, and it got them. It got them. I mean, I'm hearing people losing thousands of dollars right now, hoping that this product can go back up. Because people were taking the pre-orders, thinking of with the hype and FOMO celebrations. It was going to be hard to find. It was going to be very difficult to get. The price was going to accelerate extremely quickly. It has all this stuff going. And I know a few channels, including myself, you know, TCG Funhouse, a lot of other channels were saying, stop, wait, wait and see what allocations are going to be. Then we heard about the other wave. Wait, 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 there's another wave coming. Guys, we need to settle down. And people were buying this at $200. There are sales on TCG Player for pre-orders on this and on Toad and Troll and on a couple other places that were selling it for $199.99 pre order now you're looking at that and thinking, how many people purchased that pre-order? They were so hyped up and had so much FOMO from the Celebrations UPC, and they went and purchased this product at a really high number, thinking that it was going to be difficult to find, without thinking about the what was inside of it, without understanding what was the what was going to prevent this product from being printed. You know, you look at the Celebrations UPC, and most of us figured it was going to be a one-print run. You're probably going to get some moving around or distributors are going to find some boxes. But overall, it was one print run. And why? Because of the metal cards, right? The metal acrylic or the metal cards with the epoxy paint make it extremely difficult to reprint that. Remaking that is extremely difficult. You have to set up with the company that made them. You have to repaint that and get the paints the right color and make sure everything is uniform from the first wave to the second wave because Pokemon is very particular about print runs. On that end of things is that they want kind of uniformity where you can't tell where the product was purchased. There's no big differences between this print run A and print run B, especially in modern Pokemon. It's hard to tell when they actually came out. Sometimes the centering's better, the quality's a little bit better. Those are some indicators, but the overall printing of it is the same. Color, everything, scheme, everything else like that is all identical. Now, what do we do when it comes down to it? What what is the main goal about this whole speech? That Pokemon can use the market against you. And they're trying to sell a product. Once again, we talk about that several times. Pokemon doesn't really care about investors. They, they don't. I know some people on here said that they don't want to piss investors off because it's it makes them you know not buy product. And they really don't care. At the end of the day, Pokemon wants to sell units. The more packs, the more packs of product that they can sell, the more packs of products they can sell, the more money they make. That is their ultimate goal at the end of the day. And if they can sell a Charizard UPC to you, they will print a Charizard UPC. It doesn't have a finite number. It's not like the Celebrations UPC with a finite number. 
even this Arceus exclusive one is a little bit more finite because once again, it has a metal card in it. Yes, it's not, from what I could see, it's not like the Celebrations ones where they're the acrylic painted front with the sticker on the back. These are a sticker on the front um, and the back. So it's a little bit different of a metal card. It is repeatable. Once again, it is repeatable. It's because there's printing involved with it. The acrylic paint of the Pokemon Celebrations UPC was the one that was painted, and that's difficult to copy. That's why that one we believed had a finite number. It was probably going to be a one print run and done. That was all you're going to see for that. But this Charizard UPC, with it being paper cards, yes, there's three beautiful promos inside of here. But this product has no finite number. It could be an infinite number of these boxes being printed. There's nothing stopping this from happening. We don't know how big that print run is going to be in December yet. At least I haven't heard a number that we're looking at for that. Is it big? Is it small? Is it equivalent to what we've seen now? Is it less? You know, I'm assuming it's going to be less. My, my feeling is it's going to be considerably less because Pokemon knows you've already purchased so many of these and they're not going to be able to sell that much again. So they're going to make it a little bit less. But once again, we do know it's coming. We know there's more of this product out there. And once again, to my feelings, my gut feelings is, is that Pokemon International played hype and FOMO of Celebrations UPC in their favor in order to do that. Now, how do you prevent this from happening to you in the future? Once again, look at the products. You know, if you sit there and look at a product and you understand why that's going to be an investment, why was the Charizard UPC an investment? It, it still is. It's a long-term investment. If you were expecting short flips, like I'm hearing people that are losing a ton of money, then you're in trouble because it, it, it's just not going to be. There's too much of a product out there. This is going to be a four or five year product before we might see a good uptick in price. But when it comes down to it, it's a long-term investment. Charizard, UPC, it will do fantastic over the long run. I still have good feelings on that, that if you hold it for years, it's going to do great. But in the short scheme of things, it's, it's going to be a dud for quite a while. Arceus one to me was going to be a better product. I didn't even hesitate to put two on there because everybody was so much into the Charizard UPC. The Arceus one was sitting here kind of left alone. And I don't think they printed as much as that because I think a lot of how much their print one run they did was determined by the pre-orders that GameStop did on that. And with they did so much past it, of course. So every GameStop probably has a couple of them sitting there, but overall, the excitement was sent towards the Charizard one and not towards the Arceus one. And that, to me, that's sometimes indicative of a reason why you should stay away from a product and let it play out and let it see what's going to happen to it, see how much of it is coming. Because a lot of times the hype and FOMO of a similar product before it can really lead to people spending a lot of money, lead to high sales volumes, and Pokemon International is no dummy. They know that. They know that the sales are going to be there because of the fact that this product had hype and FOMO with the one previous, while the Arceus one kind of slipped underneath the radar. And I think that overall, in about two years, the Arceus one price for price gain is going to probably be doing a little bit better than the Charizard, but the Charizard will catch it by about five years. You'll see the Charizard one start to kick, take off if the hobby continues to grow, as new people get into it, as you know, more people are chasing Charizards. These things will continue to go up in price. Now, is it a great item to open? Yeah, I think it's a great item to open. That's why I have no problem having my kids open three of them. We'll probably take the best three of each, you know, best one of each promo and send them out to be graded because we would love to have a graded set of that up on the shelf behind me. I mean, it, it's a beautiful artwork. The promos themselves are really nice. The promos are selling fairly decent, even as much as there is out there. And I got a feeling there'll be a lot more if this price doesn't come down or start going up, if it continues to sit where it's at or drops below that $125, $120 range, yeah, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of these promos come out. We'll be seeing a lot more of these graded promos. So once again, right now, your race is to get a graded promo out on these for the makeup on the money factor of this. Well, that's going to be short-lived too because eventually it's going to get drowned out by everybody else doing the exact same thing. So there's a lot of things, the mechan mechanics running in here, a lot of mechanisms running, and now it's a foot race to see who can get to what mechanism first to capitalize the most on it. So once again, that's my thoughts. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Once again, I'm always curious to hear what you guys have to say about these kind of information and thought processes. 
once again, my thought processes are intended to bring worst case scenarios because sometimes everybody's thinking optimistically and they don't think about the worst case scenarios of these products. And are they always right? No, but it always puts in that cautionary tale to where you can maybe protect yourself a little bit more because sometimes you get blinded by the optimism of something and don't see the potential repercussions or the downsides of these products. So once again, guys, let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think? Also, before you leave, and if you've made it this far into this video, be sure you hit that subscribe and be sure you hit that like button. It's greatly appreciated and helps us out a ton. And as always, guys, for anybody that's new here, I will be putting up two videos over here for you guys afterwards for your information and education afterwards. And we will see you next time here on Northwoods TCG.